live from Portland, Oregon. Imagine someday those are all going to be autonomous cars driving around. Those are all robots. Imagine that. It's already kind of scary. Yeah. I don't know. But now, actually, I kind of want to write in one. Hello, everyone. This is TT Daily. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today, wherever you're watching. Live from Portland, Oregon, it's 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern, every day, right here. Broadcasting live on YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, and Twitch, which means we can take your comments, your questions, whatever you want to bring up today. We will discuss it with you. And we've got your tech headlines, your interviews, and special segments. On tap today, we're going to be talking to Luke Larson from our computing department here, one of our computing editors, about the brand brand new Surface Studio 2. That is the gigantic computer from Microsoft that's really amazing. And we've got our senior designer, Will Hawkins, who's going to be in here kind of discussing it, showing how it all works, drawing something on it. You'll have to stay tuned for that. It's coming up here in just a little bit. And we've got comedian Craig Conant, who's going to be hopping on the show with us to talk about his career and everything that he's got going along with that, plus all of your tech headlines and your read them and weep segment. But first, here in studio, I am joined by Adrian. Hello, Adrian. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm doing quite well on this beautiful Thursday. Excellent. <laughs> well, Adrian, we need to talk about some tech headlines. Yes, we do. So let's go to this first one. And, uh, and again, since we're live, I, a lot of what I like to do is just kind of get your feelings on this. What do you think about what we're bringing up? And it has to do with Netflix in particular. So Netflix is testing out currently right now a mobile-only subscription. Well, and how that would work is it's basically half the price. I think it's uh, $3.99 a month is what they're going for, but you would only be able to stream on a mobile device. They're testing it out right now in different Asian markets because the idea behind it for, for currently is that a lot of those places, that's the easiest access that people have to the internet is through your mobile device. So like, well, why don't we cut it in half and see if we can actually take advantage of that? But I think the concept is really interesting and I'm wondering if it could take hold here in the US. I what think, do you think? I think that would be really, really popular in the US. I think a lot of people, uh, especially these days, watch uh, streaming on their mobile devices, especially yeah. for people who travel a lot or yeah. you know, for people who maybe have a kind of crowded environment at home and tend to watch things, you know, in bed or, you know, don't exactly have access to the TV all the time. I think I think it could really take off. Now, the question is, could people cast that stream to right. their TV and get around Skip the around actual it. subscription service, the, the slightly higher tiered one. Yeah, that's kind of what I would think too. Is immediately <laughs> everybody would try to figure out how to get around that. But I mean, I, I think probably they would have some kind of a safeguard in there. Uh, to keep that F, or it would just be a really small resolution. Um, Potentially. You know, to where if you, you cast it, that that wouldn't work. Yeah, maybe it'll sure only be at 480p kind of or something, yeah. Like, I doubt Netflix has gone through all of this research, and they're like, oh, dang it, we didn't <laughs> think of that one. Uh, so <laughs> they outsmarted us. Right, they probably figured something out. But at the same time, three ninety nine just to watch on your phone, especially if you're traveling uh, a lot, and or you like you said, like you're mm -hmm. you're off by yourself watching it, or the, the your televisions are... are booked up with somebody else mm -hmm. using them. I think that idea is, is a pretty unique idea. And that's what I was curious to, for everybody listening live or watching live, what do you think of this? Would you be interested in that? Or is that not good enough? You want to have it on the big screen. Um, that's, that's kind of the thought. I think for half, once you start talking half price, I start getting interested. Yeah, exactly. Like three nine, especially with all of the other uh, streaming services that are coming out to compete with Netflix, it does feel like Which are all slightly more expensive than Netflix. Like Netflix's lowest tier is still one of the cheapest options out there currently. That's true. I, I'm not on the lowest tier. I can't remember what you get with that. Is it just I honestly one don't, don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, Disney is, with the Disney Plus service, is going to, they're going to try to undercut what Netflix's price is. At least they're claiming that. So maybe like four ninety nine a month. So I feel like maybe this is something that Netflix should roll out worldwide. Yeah, maybe. Just to see what happens. But you know, again, you would have to be willing to accept that just watching on your on your mobile device. So we'll see where it goes. I'm sure they'll they'll find out really quick how it works in these other markets and see if this is something that ends up uh, showing up here. All right, we have some more tech headlines we need to get to today, but we need to do our read them and weep segment, which we do here every day, where we take a look at the comments. <laughs> that come through all across all of our social media platforms, and we discuss some of them. So again, we do read the comments here at Digital Trends, so let us know what you think. You can leave these on there uh, all day long, and then every morning we'll pick out a few of them to kind of discuss. So let's go to our first one here, and uh, this one, I, this is funny. So yesterday on the show, we had Ryan Juanita on, and uh, he was talking about the brand new Dolby Bluetooth headphones, the actual first First device actually made oh, by Dolby. Wow. So, yeah, which I didn't realize Dolby had never actually made a device before. I don't think I had either. That's 
pretty uh, exciting and kind of seems really late in the game for them. Right, it? yeah, you would think, because you're so used to hearing Dolby when it comes to sound, but they didn't, this is their first time actually making the device themselves. Uh, and, it, and I guess they're really amazing headphones, but the problem is they're $600. Ooh. So you gotta be real <laughs> into your headphones to make that work. And uh, I think that's what Joe's referencing. If they were only $599.99, it sounds so much more reasonable. <laughs> yeah, that take that one cent off, take Dolby. one cent off. And Dolby was watching the show yesterday, <laughs> commenting in the chat, and they told Ryan he could keep the headphones. So, wow. Welcome, welcome Ryan. I worked that out for you. Put those on eBay. You owe me. All right, <laughs> let's uh, take a look at our next one here. We've got, okay, Keegan Powers. Uh, Keegan Powers, I believe, is our, our next one. Talking about the Logitech Driving Force G920 Racing Wheel Review. And uh, he says he was using automatic shifting. <laughs> ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. I don't think I get it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. I just wanted to, okay. That was, we don't need to say anything more. That was just amazing. Um, I'm weeping, I'm reading and weeping. <laughs> So it was, uh, probably because it was supposed to show off how amazing the wheel was and then he wasn't even using shifting on it, I'm going to guess. I'm just <laughs> that I really have no idea. Keegan Powers, thank you for the comment. Um, this next one, uh, Adrian, I'd like you to pronounce this name for us, please, okay. live on the air. Taufik Lawal. Thank you. Uh, the, this is regarding digital threads. <laughs> Would you use an Amazon Alexa-powered microwave? Which is true. We have one here at the office. Mm -hmm. Have you used it? I've been trying it out. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Really? Telling Alexa to microwave your potato for you or your lunch. Or, yeah. You know, Alexa, microwave my potato. <laughs> uh, microwave my pot pot. Is, is, it, is it actually, though, easier than just walking up and just pushing the buttons? No. <laughs> I mean, you have to, the problem is, is, uh, I mean, especially in an office environment, there's a lot of cross chatter. Yeah. So Alexa, a lot of the time says, I didn't get that. Or okay. Things like that. But if you had it at home, you would, this is something you would use. For because fun. Because you still have to yeah. put it into the microwave and then you're already there. It just seems so much easier just to put, push it the button. It really does. I think, I think it's, it's a little bit of a novelty, but I also uh -huh. think uh, there's a lot of benefits for people who are sight impaired, maybe, or, okay. or people who are just really bad at cooking and yeah. don't know how long to microwave things. <laughs> Alexa, I've got a hot dog in there. Tell me. Yeah, okay. All right. So, so Taufik says, let me know when Alexa can grab the popcorn bag from the pantry and put it in the microwave. Well, fun fact, Alexa can order more popcorn for you if you have, like, the dash button. Okay. Yeah, so she'll keep count of how much popcorn you have, and then we'll order more popcorn for you. I don't her. know if I like the idea of Alexa <laughs> keeping track of how much you're eating. Like, well, I wow, love another order of popcorn, huh, Greg? <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't know if I want that. I don't know if I want Alexa judging me, but... Third popcorn bag today, Greg. <laughs> As Edward just said in the, on Facebook, Alexa, cook my lunch, but leave it cold in the center. Mm. So that's, True. we'll see. I mean, it, we do have one here. I haven't tried it out yet. I do kind of want to try it. And it's reasonably priced. I think they're like 60 bucks. Yeah, they're the 60 microwave. bucks, but it's not a big microwave. It's not very powerful either. So yeah, yeah we'll see. We'll see how well it does. All right. Well, there we go. Uh, next comment here we've got from Bill Strickland regarding... Uh, I think that's supposed to say Waymo to launch autonomous car service this year, which is true. Unless there's another service I didn't know about called, uh, oh wait, where do we go? Okay, we, I think we're skipping a, okay, we're going to Charles Haney. I'm looking at a different thing on my screen. Okay, Charles Haney, regarding all the best Amazon <laughs> Black Friday deals for 2018, uh, Charles says, I still haven't done my Christmas shopping from last year. Oh. That's, I'm pretty bad about it myself. Yeah, I am as well. The two-day or... delivery is really helpful for me. <laughs> Like that's that's kind of the the guaranteed part for me that that helps out a lot. Why does anybody go anywhere physical to shop anymore? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah. So do you order everything online? Um, you know, I haven't ordered toilet paper yet. I haven't quite gotten there, but um, it's it's it may yeah. come before two thousand nineteen. I think it's, it's what's gonna happen to me because no matter what, like if I'm going into the store and I don't, it, I mean, who cares? It's Toilet paper, but I always run into somebody I know oh. I'm buying like the big. Oh. Somebody I haven't seen for a long time, and there's nothing wrong with it, but it's just, it's, it's always awkward. I'm just like, yep. Hi. We're here. Got a 20 pack. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think maybe ordering online yeah. is the way I want to go. All right. Let's move on from that topic. Okay, we've got Bill. So this is the, this is the comment I was thinking about, Bill Strickland, uh, regarding Waymo to launch autonomous car service this year, which we were talking about earlier, and that's why I was bringing up the autonomous cars, is that Waymo does claim they're going to have an autonomous car service that's going to be launching by the end of this year, and it's going to be in the Phoenix area to start off with, and then spreading around to other cities where you can order up an autonomous car, and it'll be completely driverless, and it will take you where you want to go. Excellent. Yeah. 
So first one of its kind. Uh, Bill says, I think car travel is largely a waste of what time I have left. So if I, real optimistic look out there. Uh, so if I get a simulated Stop. driver, I'm going to reach over and press the gas pedal to the floor with my walking cane. Don't want to waste my time in piddle traffic. Hashtag get off my lawn. So <laughs> Bill, I mean, you know, I can, I can kind of appreciate that. Doesn't want to, Bill doesn't want to waste his time. Yeah, crankiest comment of the day. Yeah, I, absolutely. Bill, you win. <laughs> you win the crankiest comment. But I, I love the idea of Bill in a, in an uh, autonomous, autonomous car vehicle yelling at it. And pressing Take the gas out. pedal with, <laughs> with a cane. <laughs> yelling at it despite the fact there's no human there still yelling at it. You know, I probably would as well. I have quite a bit of road rage. And yeah. so I, I feel like I would probably still yell at people on the road, even if I was in an autonomous vehicle. I would too. It's all perfectly <laughs> controlled, but yet still find a reason to get mad. Absolutely. Yeah, all right. As, I wonder if you get control of a horn. Like, do they let you ca have control of the horn in the autonomous car? I bet they take that away from you. Damn it. This is why technology is taking us backwards. I don't. I need. I need the horn. That's actually. All. Yeah, we need to know. Does anybody know? Please comment. Yeah, let, let us, us know, know if, if you still have control of the horn. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's go out here, and I think. Uh, oh, we do have one more. We do have Gil Gil Avalos, uh, owners of ROM sites, ordered to pay Nintendo more than twelve million dollars, and uh, that's just talking about Nintendo suing some different people who who put up. You know the uh, the games. That you oh, download, emulators! Yeah, yeah. The emulators. Thank you. Uh, I wonder if Nintendo will learn anything about the battles RIAA waged against file sharing sites. It's a fruitless battle because once you take out one, ten more pop up to replace them. Mm -hmm. That's I can true. see that. I think it's a little bit different than music, as far as I'm concerned, because it's probably talking just referencing the different music battles that happen on. Because you're constant. There's so much music out there, and constantly new music. I feel like games. At some point, there's a limited supply of Nintendo games. Exactly. That can be up. I mean, Nintendo games only exist on Nintendo consoles, so there's only a limited supply of right. those that come out. So yeah, when you're when you're. Um emulating Pokemon, it's not like, oh, another Pokemon's gonna pop up. Right, yeah. I mean, I think there's, I mean, I guess there'd be another site that would that would bring it up, yeah. but um, is it there that big of a demand? I'm not sure. I guess maybe enough that they're suing. You know, it's been a while more. since I downloaded it and used it in a, a college class instead of paying attention. Uh, for satirical purposes <laughs> only, Adrian. We only. don't want to get Nintendo in here all up on this, so. <laughs> Uh, so and there it is, Nintendo suing for $12 million. All right, let's get to a couple other topics that we do have here today to cover before we're going to be joined by Luke Larson and Will Hawkins to show off the Surface Studio 2. Okay, um, let's talk about Facebook. Yes. So this story <laughs> just kind of popped up uh, over the weekend, or over the last couple of days, excuse me. And I just thought it was an interesting insight into Facebook itself. So Mark Zuckerberg has now proclaimed that all of uh, Facebook management is no longer allowed to use iPhones because of the fact he's ticked off about something Tim Cook said in an MSNBC interview. So Tim Cook claimed basically referencing uh, Facebook and other kinds of services like it, uh, said that... Um, they said He said essentially that it's a service that traffics your personal life. Yes, and invades people's privacy. Yeah. And, emphasize, and then emphasize that Apple sees privacy as a human right and a civil liberty, and he finds it creepy when all of a sudden something is chasing me around the web, <laughs> referring to sophisticated ad targeting, which is what Facebook does. Um, I can kind of see Tim Cook's point. I mean, at the same mm -hmm. time, you're Apple. I mean, you're, you know, you're, <laughs> almost, well, I don't know if they're still a trillion dollar company. I think bouncing around a trillion dollar company, maybe there's a, you know, a few skeletons in that closet too, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it really, it pissed off Mark Zuckerberg enough to where he demanded his management not use iPhone. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's speculated that it pissed him off enough. It, it is apparently a pretty smart business decision for a worldwide company to go to Android because it's the most popular uh, mobile yeah. operating system in the world versus iOS. But, uh, yeah, we, we suspect that Mark Zuckerberg is a little hot-headed maybe in this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he did say, um, according to the New York Times, he was infuriated. And then in an interview with Ooh. Recode, he said he found Cook's comments to be extremely glib, and that he thinks it's important that we get, don't all get Stockholm Syndrome and let the companies that work hard to charge you more convince you that they actually care more about you because that sounds ridiculous to me. So Zuckerberg versus Tim Cook. That is the celebrity death match I want to see. <laughs> I want to see that fight. <laughs> Zuckerberg I do too. versus Cook. I don't know who I would have in that one. I'd probably put my money on Zuckerberg just because he's um, a robot. Yeah, that's true. He is an android. 
Yeah, okay, that makes sense. All right, well, so that's, that's what's going on. Zuckerberg uh, telling his staff that they can no longer use iPhones. All right, uh, here's another one. Yeah, and oh. other mobile phone news. Mobile phone. We've got the Google Pixel, the Google Pixel 3, which just came out a little bit earlier this year, a couple of months ago. Uh, Google has now rolled out a new feature that's going to be available across all of the Pixel phones called Night Sight. And it's essentially to help... Uh, the, the way they're tagging it is night sight allows you to see in the dark. So it's when you're taking photos, and you know, obviously, when it's in low light, it's mm -hmm. difficult. Yeah. This will automatically use uh, artificial intelligence and Pixel's HDR plus processing to boost colors and brightness that? photos captured in very dark environments. And this is Julian Chikatu, our mobile editor, who was talking about this. And take a look at the pictures here that we had. We had the dog, you know, and you can see there's a pretty big difference in the lighting. Absolutely. Um, it, it really looks like, you know, you take this into a super dark area and all of a sudden you can see things that even the human eye can't see, which is pretty right. cool. Um, it apparently also uses uh, motion metering, which kind of takes into account the user holding the phone. And, you know, you take the snapshot and there's always going to be a little bit of wiggle, but uh, yeah. it, it keeps it pretty steady even while it's filtering in all of that light. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I mean, I like this idea. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's a great feature that they're rolling out. This I mean, we've all tried to take photos of our food in dark restaurants, and it doesn't really work. Oh, I don't. Actually, <laughs> you I don't? don't. Yeah. You just don't eat it. I don't think I eat anything exciting. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's true, though. We do, I think that's a really good feature. And we do have, a, a, I think there's one other set of images there from uh, Julian. So this is, this is Julian, our mobile editor. This is on his article. I didn't, these aren't like, <laughs> take it from anywhere. But <laughs> Julian... Julia took a picture in the dark. I'm assuming that's his house. Uh, one, uh, and, you know, one on the left, one on the right. You can see a remarkable difference there. Yeah, you can. Uh, you could take pictures of all kinds of things. Yeah, <laughs> Julian's actually a very friendly guy. He's very nice. Uh, but that picture, um, you know, it's a little off, but we'll serial killer. Julian, Sorry, Julian. <laughs> gonna send me an email right now. I guarantee it. <laughs> All right, so we have that. Uh, let's talk about just at least one other thing here before we before we do need to take a break and get Luke and Will in here. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Julian to write me. Um, <laughs> what uh, what we want to talk about now is you know we brought up uh, car services. We said Waymo has theirs and obviously to compete with Uber and Lyft, but they are not the only ones getting into the car sharing business. Lime, which Lime for a lot of people probably references, you've seen the Lime scooters, which we just got them here in Portland not very long ago. I'm, I know there are a lot of other cities around, around the country. And Lime doesn't want to stop at just scooters, and they've made that apparent. Mm -hmm. They had bikes, they had scooters. Now they've got their car services, and they're calling it Lime Pod. So it's going to be rental cars, and uh, like shared Lime cars, kind of like, uh, let's see, what would it be, uh, car to go car to go Reach, Reach now. now is another one. Um, a little bit different than Zipcar, where it's, it's free-floating, so you can take one, use it for a specified amount of time, it charges you by the minute, and then you just drop it off anywhere in a designated area. So you can park it wherever you want, which, mm -hmm. is, a, which is a great feature. And they're launching this in Seattle. So they've got 500 cars, I think is what they're looking for by the end of this year. 500 cars on the streets in Seattle, and then up to 1,500 in the city by early next year. This is a lot of car services. It's a lot that of cars. It actually, you know, it's aiming to cut down on congestion. Uh, car sharing services have actually proven to show, show that there's less cars on the road because people are only using it when they need it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can see that, but it, it's also taking up the parking spaces, and that's always what I kind of look at. Like, <laughs> There's already no parking in Seattle. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, Courtney says park it anywhere like the sidewalk. I think you have to park it in an actual spot. Somebody else's driveway. But that's, uh, it's fine. We've never seen the Lime scooters that are everywhere. Uh, they're here. You know, it makes sense because... Did you use them? I'd use one. Okay. I, I was terrified. It was very right. late at night, and I, I'm, I'm a what wuss, there? so I was hitting the like the gas or whatever the the, <laughs> the motor, and uh, it was very like, hing, hing. <laughs> so I was afraid to go too fast. <laughs> so it didn't work out for you. I mean, you know, I'd be willing to try again. <laughs> have you tried one? I have. Yeah, I tried one, um, and uh, yeah, I, did, I didn't enjoy it. I, I went on a side <laughs> road. Let's just say the shocks are terrible on that thing. Yes, yeah. exactly. I saw yeah. somebody actually in Minneapolis recently take a Lime uh, bike to a Lime scooter and then transfer over. Wow. So maybe this will this will create a Lime chain scooter to bike to yeah. car. Maybe. I mean, I know a lot of people use them. Uh, Jake, our producer here behind the scenes, he, mm -hmm. he uses them a lot. And uh, so I just called him out. Maybe he didn't want me to do that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, 
I think uh, I think there are definitely some advantages, but it is interesting to see Lime Cars Jack on YouTube also saying can't wait to see Lime Cars all over the sidewalk. <laughs> That is really Lime might need to yeah do a little bit of marketing on that yeah. part. Seems like that's what everybody thinks of when they think of those. <laughs> All right, well, I think we're about out of time for some tech headlines right now. Adrian, thank you for hopping yes, in here today. Yes, thank you for having me. And uh, coming up, we're going to be talking to Luke and Will about the Surface Studio 2. We have one here in the room. You can kind of see it off to the corner. We're going to have a live drawing that's going to be happening. Will, our senior designer, is going to be doing that. We've got Luke talking about all the features. If you have questions, now is the time to ask. Questions about the Surface Studio 2. It's a pretty amazing computer. We'll have that for you right here in just a couple of minutes on DT Daily. Back here with more DT Daily. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. As we said, we're live on YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, and Twitch. And since we are live, we can take your comments and your questions. We want to hear what those are. So today, we have our review of the Surface Studio 2 that is out right now. I'm here with one of our computing editors. It is Luke Larson. Hello, Luke. Hey. What's hey. Up? How are you doing? Good. good. So you, the Surface Studio 2, this has been anticipated for a while. Yeah, it got announced uh, about couple months ago uh -huh. and uh, we finally got it and the embargo lifted this morning so I've had some time to play with it and review it. It's been really fun. So. And, and we're going to go through kind of all the features and, and everything that you've reviewed on it so far but I want to also introduce we have Will Hawkins with us. Hello. Hello Will. So Will is one of uh, your senior designer mm -hmm. here at Digital Trends. Yes I am. So which means a lot of the artwork I mean what, what all does a senior designer do? I design Pretty much all of the advertisements that are on Digital Trends website, as well as all of our one-off custom landing pages and fun illustrations, and get to test cool Surface Studio. Yeah, stuff like this. So, do you use a Surface Studio currently? Um, I do not. This is actually the second time I've used this, and so far, so good. Well, um, what we're going to be doing, so just to explain, you know, we, I mean, that's the Surface Studio there, too, the shot that you were seeing with Will. So Will's going to work on this and complete a drawing while we're talking about this, like well, showcasing some of the amazing features. Attempt to complete a <laughs> Attempt to complete We're going to see what we can do. <laughs> we'll see. In theory, we could have a drawing by the end of this. Um, but yeah, so, and, and we want to come back to you, too, and just ask, like, so, what some of the features are that you're enjoying. But uh, while you're working on that, Luke, why don't we kind of just walk through some of the different uh, things that you found with us? Um, yeah, so the Surface Studio 2, um, you know, the big, the big thing that, that this, it, it looks a lot like the original if you've ever seen it. Basically, yeah. the, the cool thing about it, and you can see it with, um, with Will, it, the, the entire screen tilts back in a, a really cool way. You have demonstrated there. Yeah. Um, and it can go from a full on, you know, normal desktop position all the way to a, almost a flat, just a, a little tiny bit of a tilt. Um, drawing table basically, and that, that's what makes it extremely unique in, in you know today. It's the only product like this. Basically. Yeah, and I, I like the stand because where, wherever you park it, it stays 
at that spot. Right, which like is really, pretty, yeah. It, it seems counterintuitive. It seems like you would just be, be constantly having to worry about that. But. Yeah, and it, like, it, what's, what's kind of like magical about it is when you, they call it like a zero gravity hinge, but basically it's really easy to pull down into whatever position you want, but it doesn't feel like if you push down on it with your pen and your hand, it'll mm -hmm. just like collapse down. It just, I don't know, it has the right balance of, of like rigidity and also like um, it's easy to do, you know? Well, and, and we want to talk about the internal side of it as well, but just taking a look, you know, just looking at what Will's doing right now. So obviously you've got the pencil uh, that goes along with it and right. it's completely touch screen. So why don't we just talk about that aspect? So he's got the, the Surface Pen there, which comes pen, with the... Me. which come, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Which, I was like, Apple <laughs> Pencil, Surface Pen. Sorry. <laughs> which comes with, uh, with, comes with the computer, comes bundled in, and that's, that's really cool. And obviously, like, the big thing here, and this is the reason why we're doing this and the reason mm -hmm. why we wanted to get it into the hands of somebody who could actually draw, mm -hmm. unlike me, who it's yeah, or completely me. wasted on. Yeah. Um, it's because this is what it was designed for. And like, as you can see, like, it just like, it has a really high, this is the best stylus you can get. And it has a really high degree of sensitivity. And I think just being able to draw right on the screen, mm -hmm. just even for me, it was like, kind of like lighting up my imagination. I was like, wow, maybe I am an artist. Yeah. You know? and it's kind of inspiring to just get to like, do it right on the screen, which is I think what's kind of magical about it. Uh, so as far as what it's running internals, what are we talking about? Yeah, so this is a very expensive machine. This yeah. is like, this. it starts at $3,500, which is even more expensive than the previous version. Wow. Um, so this is not this a... This is a high-end design This is a machine. really high-end design, and like the thing that I talk about in the review, which you should go check out, um, is th it really is an iMac or an iMac Pro competitor. Uh, Microsoft is really trying to draw that creative professional audience. Yeah, I'm taking a look here at some of the comments coming through. Rahul says the iMac killer. Uh, Kunal says it's the best device for creators, but I prefer iMac as a computer. It has tons of Thunderbolt ports and 10 gigabit e Ethernet. Right. iMac is just a better computer. Yeah, and that's, that's a perfectly good argument, honestly, because um, you are paying for this extra stuff, like the fact yeah. that it can do this, and it comes with a pen, and right. it's a touch screen. And, and really, it is an incredible computer, just when you like look at it and use it. The screen is, it's 28 inches, and it's, it's more than 4K. It's 4,500 by 3,000 pixels. Wow. It's super sharp. And it's, it's one of the best displays we've ever tested in the office. Um, it's brighter than the IMAX screen. It's like 520 nits. It's just like if you turn it up, it'll just like fry your eyes. Blind you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just an incredible display to use. And it's three by two aspect ratio, which a lot of people, you know, if you're not familiar, it's a little bit taller and boxier than like the standard display or even at like the iMac, um, which just gives you a big view, as you can see, like a big view of your work. Right. And like it's great for like splitting the screen and having two things open because you can, there's just so much you can see, you know? I mean, it's, it is, it feels like it, you know, you're looking at a draft board, you know, like an old school drafting board. Totally. It's just brought to life with yeah. all of this modern technology. Totally. Um, what are some other features of it that, that stood out to you? So the one big update, this was one of our complaints from the original. It, it looks very similar to the original, but the, this time around, all the internals have been updated. And one of the biggest internals that have been updated is the graphics card. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a, our version has the GTX 1070. It also come, you can also, the, the base model is a 1060. These are, the 1070 is a very capable graphics card, you know. Um, you can, we, not only is it good for stuff like, you know, editing video, rendering video, stuff like that, it's actually a pretty good gaming computer. Really? Which is probably not, not like what they're selling it as. Yeah, it's not what I would think of. <laughs> but I mean, if you want to do some gaming on the side, it can basically handle any game you throw at it. Um, it not always in max resolution, because again, this is just like beyond 4K and it's right. like, you know, it's not gonna be able to handle that. But like, for example, we, we loaded up Fortnite on it, put it in 4K max, settings and everything and it just ran really smooth so i mean i suppose if you're paying thirty five hundred dollars it's a nice bonus it's nice to have here. a couple <laughs> of extra things that can do yeah. other than just this yeah. other than just that <laughs> um some questions that are that are coming in here let's see don't forget the puck is that that was what was on the the previous one right the surface dial yeah. is, is the is the name of that um it's a hundred dollar kind of thing it doesn't come bundled in with the device and we didn't get one shipped to us with from microsoft um, but it's a very cool little peripheral. And the main thing for it, as you can see, like the way Will's doing this is like, he's having to kind of like, he's drawing, which is what this is great at. But um, whenever you have to go into like settings and stuff, it's a mm -hmm. little finicky, even like in something like Illustrator, just because it wasn't designed for like touching on a giant screen, right? Yeah. So like the, the surface dial, you put it on the screen. And you and can it, drag and it you across. Can drag and it across, you can spin it, and it gives you all these different like access to quick 
you know, you want to swap colors out, you want to do like um, quick little things like quick actions, you know, yeah. that's what it's for. But. And we are we are live, so I'm, I'm seeing some different questions come through. So go ahead and feel free to drop those in there. Rahul's at uh, how many inches? That's uh, 28 inches. So it's um, 20 inches diagonally. It's a big monitor. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's it's kind of standard for a monitor size, but I mean, when you have it in front of you, and just because of how there is something yeah, massive about it. I mean, it's very thin. <laughs> it's know. also very thin. It's the thinnest all-in-one like computer, and the reason why they're able to do that, I don't know if you can tell from the shot, but um, the, all the components are put into the base. So, like, unlike an iMac where it's all like you know in the in the display, the Surface Studio has a little base at the bottom where they put all the um, components. So. That's gotcha. kind of cool, and that's what makes it so thin and able to like be where it can out. yeah go down. Somebody was asking, I did see that too as as well, of whether it's it said it looks shaky. It's not shaky. No. I mean, that may be the cart that it's on, but I mean, it's uh, the table underneath it. Yeah, is a little it's the cart. Yeah, <laughs> the cart's the one cart. that's shaky. Uh, yeah, the computer itself is very stable, which it's really like surprisingly stable. It doesn't seem like it should be. Um, well, let's talk to you you know, just about working through this. So, what are some of the aspects that you're enjoying about this computer that you like or don't like? Uh, what are your instant thoughts here? I love this pen. This pen is a blast. It feels like drawing on paper, but almost a little bit more smooth because it's on glass. It's It's got a really nice response to it. Uh, you can move quickly without having to navigate through multiple screens. Um, and just touch features are absolutely phenomenal. One of the, I know like for a lot of people, and I wrote about this in the review because I knew this would be an issue, like Apple has such a tight grip on the creative professional community. Like mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah, I mean, even seeing the comments, you know, people are very much into, into Apple. Like if you're, yeah. if you're in that creative side. So just the idea of switching over to Windows 10. I yeah. know, Will, you mentioned that as one of the first things, just like even despite how great it might be, like the idea of switching over, it just seems like, too big of a... Especially if it's hassle. ingrained in you for so many oh, years, yeah. you know, totally. you work on Apple. I think that's the hardest part about this. Like, yeah. once I'm in the application, totally fine. <laughs> right. But the... That mental the, hurdle of getting <laughs> over that. Tripping, tripping through the steps to get to it is... Yeah. Is a new experience, but it's fun. Yeah. So, what, normally, do you use any kind of a pen or a pencil for drawing? Um, I use a Wacom tablet okay. um, on my Mac. And I also use an iPad. Um, okay. My, this is very similar to drawing on an iPad. Yeah, that's yeah. extremely. Yeah. Um, touch gestures are a little quicker, I think, depending on what you're doing. Um, however, having full blown Illustrator with a basically a whole table's worth of drawing space right. is incredible. Yeah. So, so what do you what are you drawing there? Uh, I'm drawing Stan Lee. Very appropriate. It looks good so far. Yeah, Thank I was going to say, that Thank would you. take me, I don't care how fancy the computer is, that would take me weeks to just get even to that point. So, uh, We're a little yeah. messy, but it's a fun <laughs> it day. It looks great. So. That's great. So, uh, so yeah, so that part's working. Um, any, other, any other thoughts or comments that you have, Will, as far as using this? As far as using this, um, I hope we get to keep this longer so I can use it more. <laughs> yeah. So, is it enough to make you switch? Would it be enough to make me switch? Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. However, I would love to add this into my workflow. So to have it to as have just both. another. Yep, just yeah. another asset at my. Uh, and at I my think disposal. like what we talked about earlier was like when you're really focusing just on like you're in Illustrator or whatever, and you're really focusing on what you're doing. Like this is like kind of ideal, right? I mean, like exactly. If you're if you're doing like a bunch of things at once, and you got like you need to be like multitasking kind of like this mm -hmm. is going to be it's kind of it's not built for that right it's built for like yeah. intense yeah. design yeah yeah, yeah. yeah heavy in-depth design right it's just to focus on what you're doing and just to you know just to bring it back quickly to like the components um this doesn't have a super fast processor in it um, and i think and while that's kind of you know that's something that people are going to definitely have a hang up over and it was something that i noticed definitely in the in the review but um really this is designed for a single tasks to like really nail. Yeah. And you, you like you know when you're when he's doing what he's doing now he's not going to notice there's no lag there's no like no slow down yeah it's moving all. really quickly back which and is, forth which is uh is great but I, it should be noted that this is not a like you know six core like multitasking you know monster of a computer like yeah. even like the iMac Pro is you know has like a an insane processor in it right uh, this is not that 
So this is a, a step back from that. I would this say. is designed for this purpose. Exactly. Uh, yeah, because Jack was just saying on YouTube, just take a look at the comments, uh, how much is a similar performing iMac? Um, the, it's actually very similar to the iMac right now. The, the iMac hasn't been updated in about a year and a half. So it's running on a seventh gen processor just like this one is. Um, so I would say that the performance is very similar feeling yeah. to, to the, that iMac. I wish that, you know, because this is a new product, I wish that this had an, an updated processor in it, but that's, it, that is a similar comparison to make, I would say. Uh, but it's being asked to, uh, talk of just asked, do you have the puck? You can talk about the Surface dial. They, Microsoft didn't ship one with this. Uh, for the review. So I think we've got videos of the previous Surface Dial mm -hmm. at digitaltrends.com that you can take a look at and see how that works. Um, but yeah, there yeah. wasn't one that came No like new this. version or anything. The old so one same, was, same old was one. supported, but it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't updated in any way. Okay. Well, it's a really incredible computer. Uh, and, uh, and this full review is up at digitaltrends.com right now that yep. you can take a look Check at. Yeah. Uh, any other key notes that you wanted to let people know about? Um, you know, I just, just that this is a very specific computer for a very niche group of uh, right. audience, but that doesn't make it any less cool. I think it has a, a cool factor that's just like you bring it into the room and you show like how it tilts and stuff and you're just like, wow, this is a cool piece of technology, kind of regardless of whether or not it's practical for you. Probably yeah. it's not, I'm guessing. <laughs> right. You know, for the average person, it's not. Um, yeah, it'd be fun. I would love to, yeah. love to mess around with it or for a while. Also, you know, like, the, our, um, we've got another one in the office, and it's great for kids, too, like, as much as it might be I don't know if I'd want a kid a... near it for $3,500. But... <laughs> yeah, as much as it might be silly with the price, like, it would be a very cool, like, thing for a kid to just, and, like, it feels very natural for a kid to just, like, be able to, like, touch it. Yeah, and, like, touch it and actually it. have that kind of feeling with it. Yeah, and get to, like, draw on it and stuff. Yeah. So. Well, it's really cool, and we'll thank you for hopping in here, too, and uh, drawing. It looks Dude, great. you were really good. That's like, <laughs> that's crazy. There's the fact no that he did that in 10 minutes yeah, is shocking. Yeah, I know. Did I do it? Did that I make would it? take me 10 weeks just to get to that point and it still wouldn't look very good. Well, uh, Will, thanks for taking some time to coming in that's here. Awesome. And Luke, thank you so much for the yeah. reviews. The review's up, digitaltrends.com. Take a look at it there. Uh, let us know. You can drop in comments and questions on that as well. And so that way we can get back to you and, and let you know uh, the answers to those things. So this is great. Uh, things that we do here on DT Daily. So what's going to happen now is we're going to take a quick break. And then we are going to be back here in just a minute because we have more of this show left. We've got Craig Conant, comedian Craig Conant, who's going to be joining us to talk about his career, some... I've got a few questions for him. There's some interesting things on his bio that we're going to get to here in a second. So stick around with us. We'll be right back with more DT Daily. more DT Daily. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We are live on YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, and Twitch. So drop your comments and your questions in there. And we have a very special guest hopping on right now, comedian Craig Conant. Hello, Craig. Yeah. How much? How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Doing great. Uh, thanks so much for, for joining us today. Uh, I got to ask, where are you at right now? I'm in Los Angeles. 
Okay, you're in LA, all right. And are you uh, on tour right now or taking a break? I am, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in LA, baby. I'm busy. <laughs> well, I wanted to talk about your career in comedy and in particular, you know, looking up about you, it sounds like maybe you got, you were a little uh, rambunctious growing up. Would that be a fair uh, way to? I, uh, I, I drank and uh, did some drugs and got arrested uh, many, many of times. <laughs> <laughs> well, so starting off with that, like going down that path, how did you find comedy out of all that? Uh, it was the uh, third arrest, and I was in jail, and I was uh, a bit of a loser, you know. And uh, I was high and lived with my mother as a grown-ass man. And then <laughs> I just said, oh, man, enough. Am I allowed to cuss? Yeah, do whatever you want. Okay. I, I censored myself. I, anyways, I was like, enough of this shit. <laughs> and then uh, I was like, I'm going to get sober, and I'm going to get into comedy. And then I did. And uh, now I, that's what I do. I'm five years sober and I've been doing stand up about six years now. And uh, yeah, I tour and sell t shirts. It's pretty nice. That's well, hey, congratulations just really quick on the sobriety for five years. That's very impressive. That's really hard to do. And uh, that's, that's a huge accomplishment in its own right. But being a stand up comedian for six years, that's another huge accomplishment. What was it like going up that first time on stage when you made that decision? You know, okay, this is something I want to try out. Like, what was the first time like? Oh, sweet Jesus, man. <laughs> uh, you have, uh, you, I, for me, I had crippling uh, anxiety and uh, my heart was in my throat. This seems like the worst career choice ever for crippling anxiety. I, I ain't gonna lie, it, it was scary for, uh, the first two years <laughs> and you're pretty uh, terrible at it you're pretty god awful yeah i was fortunate enough i'm a i'm a bit of a goofball so no matter what they might have they usually are at least laughing at me <laughs> maybe, maybe not my jokes but just uh just my face or my voice but yeah you bomb you bomb hard and bomb mm -hmm. a lot and uh, then you get good and then you get stuff yeah, and then it keeps going from there. Like, what was it like? When was that first break where you knew, you know, because obviously, like you said, it's got to be really hard going through that. What was, was there a first moment or point in your career where you were like, okay, this is my career now. I am a comedian. Uh, yeah, well, I, producers would have me, uh, as an early up-and-comer, they would have me work their shows for stage time, which was doesn't sound like much, but when you're, you know the new kid on the block it is it is a lot because it means you're that they want you on every show yeah and uh you know some uh established bigger comedians had me uh have me open up which is also a uh, huge step in the right direction yeah because i mean that means they trust you enough and trust your comedy enough you know that if they're you know the bigger comedian or whatever they don't want somebody on there that's that's going to you know, tank their show. So that means that's yeah. a sign of respect, obviously, I would think. Yeah, no, it is. They, they want it. They want a uh, friend as well as a solid comedian because it is their, their show with uh, 500 up to 3000 people. And depending on if it's a club or a theater and yeah, what well, you just said, they, they, uh, they trust your comedy because uh, if you bomb, it makes them look bad. Right. Know? Yeah. Um, who are some of the comedians that you tour with now or that you open up for? Uh, my buddy Chris D'Elia yeah. and uh, Bobby Lee, Michael Yo, and yeah. Those are some good dudes. Uh, I've, I've met Bobby Lee a few times. That's, uh, that's got to be kind of a riot being with yeah, him. He's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's nuts. I mean, they, we can just say it, but in the best way possible. Uh, Bob, yeah. yeah, Bobby's fantastic. Well, Craig, um, so now you're a, you're a regular at the Laugh Factory and Comedy Store, is that right? And the, yeah, and the Improv. And, and the Improv. Those are like the, the biggest clubs in L.A., and you're a regular at all of those now. Yeah, I perform there regularly, and it's, uh, I was at the Improv last night, and the lineup was uh, Donnell Rawlings, uh, Dane Cook, David Spade, and Kevin Nealon. Wow. How does that feel seeing your name up there with those with those people? It feels pretty damn cool, man. Yeah. 
So, uh, so what's next in the career? You know, and wh where do you go from here? Do you have dreams of acting more or being in, in movies and television or is stand up where you want to focus? Stand up is my baby and my main focus. Uh, but yes, uh, of course, I would love to get in some sitcoms and or movies. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, don't mind being the weird neighbor. I don't need to be the star. <laughs> I could be the guard. I don't do shit, man. Let's do the. The weird neighbor sounds like a fun role anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, what's coming up? How can people follow you and follow your career and follow everything that you're doing? What's the best way for that? Uh, follow me on Instagram at Craig P. Conant. And it's the, my handle is the same on Twitter. And that's uh, where most of my uh, content goes. I'm also on Facebook. And I have a podcast called Community Service. Let's talk about the podcast. What's, what's involved in the podcast? And uh, it, it's stories of, uh, of debauchery and uh, arrest and getting shit faced. Uh, but hopefully there's a silver lining where you learned a lesson and you cleaned up your life. That's it doesn't always go that route, though. But that's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there an example of any story that you can tell us on here? Yeah, it's the, 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 the third arrest that I brought up earlier. I threw uh, firecrackers at uh, police on horses. Oh. In, in yeah, it doesn't seem like it went in well. No, they, uh, they chased me down. The horses, they're fast, you know, and they got me. They chased I, you I, down, like, on the horse? Yeah, man. How do, they, how do they stop you? Did they, I mean, I'm just curious about the physics of it. Is it like they knock you over, or is there, yeah, like, they, a lasso involved? Like, how does that, how does that work, <laughs> you know? Uh, the police tackled me, okay, like a, uh, a football player. Uh, but actually, uh, when it made three local newspapers, and one of the article titles was "Deputies Lasso Lamita Man." <laughs> 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 That's got to go on your on your business card or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of my, uh, I was the lasso Lamita Man. Yeah. Well, Craig, I mean, thank you so much for hopping on here today, too, to talk to us. And, you know, congratulations, like I said, seriously on the sobriety on that. But really, congratulations on the comedy career. I mean, it sounds like you found exactly what you were wanting to find this whole time. And now you're on the, on the path that you want to be and clearly getting more and more successful. Like, just congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, Craig, thanks for hopping in. And make sure everybody follow Craig on all of those different outlets. And um, I'm sure your tours, just actually really quick, uh, where can people see where you're performing? Uh, on my website and or my Instagram, I post all shows. Uh, okay. Through. Thank okay. you so much. Absolutely. Thanks, Craig. All right, well, there we go. Craig Conant joining us here on DT Daily. This is what's so fun about this show. Every day, we have something different going on. We have different interviews. We have different guests. Um, today, just alone, you know, we talked about the beginning of the show. Uh, Netflix may be launching a, mo a small uh, mobile version, like a mobile subscription-only service. We've got Lime uh, bringing out their car service to Seattle. We had Luke and Willen here showing off the Surface Studio 2, hands-on, in-studio. Will making an incredible drawing. You can check all that out and all of these things go up as video on demand afterward that you can uh, take a look at as well and then of course Craig Conant joining us Adrian Warner there in the beginning segment every day something different which is why we love having you in here live or watching it later on that's great too but uh, hit the subscribe button no matter where you're finding DT daily all of our live programming coming up later today it is Thursday right now Thursday uh, November 15th. I lost track of the day. It's Thursday, November 15th. Coming up later today at 2.30 p.m. Pacific, we will have our live podcast, kind of a roundtable show where it's called Trends with Benefits, where we talk about a few different topics, and we love to have people join in on that, too. Also broadcast live, so tune in for that, and just stay tuned to Digital Trends all day long for all the latest tech news. We'll have the reviews up there. We'll have everything that you're looking for. Uh, just follow us on the site, and make sure you come right back here tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, for another edition of DT Daily. We'll see you tomorrow.